Hello everyone, thank you for coming today um, and thank you for this opportunity to share um, some of the research I've been doing with all of you. Uh, my name is Ben Lee Taylor and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the McPherson Institute here at McMaster University. And today I'm going to share some of the research my team has been doing um, in the area of generative AI and higher education. And in particular, I'm going to introduce this 4C, design, uh, 4C assessment design framework that we're starting to develop. So I'm going to start off today by just going over a little bit about generative AI and its intersections with education. Um, then I'll move to summarizing um, some of what we're doing in our research, the sort of structure and methods of our study. Um, I'll also introduce some existing frameworks around this topic. It's a very new topic, so things are kind of coming out uh, very rapidly. And then I'll position our own framework against those as one that's a bit more adaptable and durable, in my opinion, in the long run. So what is generative AI? Um, most people in this room have, probably have some idea. Um, it is one type of AI. Uh, it's very popular right now, obviously, in the news. Um, and the thing that distinguishes it from other forms of AI is that it generates new content um, based on user input. Um, so it can generate images, text, video, mixtures of all of these things. Um, and its ability to do this is made possible from training on massive data sets. Um, and so it learns patterns and it can produce um, new content that seems human made. And so this is what becomes kind of an issue for education and assessment because students can use this and they can turn, um, turn assignments in that seem human made, but perhaps were you know, generated by AI. And of course, the most popular model currently is ChatGPT. I'm sure everyone is tired of hearing that word. Um, research in AI and education is not new. Um, it's, it goes back quite a ways, uh, but it's kind of accelerated with the introduction of ChatGPT since November of 2022. Um, so over the past year or so, some key areas of impact have emerged, academic integrity being kind of the primary one still. Plagiarism and cheating are really um, you know, primary concerns for instructors and administrators. Um, there's this question of whether the university should be responsible for training students uh, to be ready for uh, their workplace um, by teaching them how to use AI effectively and responsibly. Accessibility and inclusion has also been a topic or an area of focus uh, in terms of AI. Um, for example, AI models have been explored for how they can help students with disabilities, perhaps. And finally, there's just this overarching question of how can this tool, which is clearly not going away, be integrated into the overall student learning process in beneficial ways. So given these details, um, early in our um, sort of study design, we realized that these things kind of all coalesce into assessment practices, right? How students are being evaluated. Um, what sort of assignments they're being given are all impacted um, by these areas uh, that have to do with generative AI. So our research began in the summer of 2023. Um, we're taking a mixed methods approach uh, that consists first of a survey that we're distributing across Canada to instructors, asking them for some basic details, um, and also asking them to submit an assessment that they're going to use in a course this year that addresses generative AI in some fashion. Um, out of these submitted assessments and our content analysis, um, we've designed this initial framework that I'm going to share with you soon. Um, with the permission of instructors, we're also sharing these assessments as open educational resources. So it's a sort of output that's shared back to the academic community. Um, this winter, we'll be doing follow-up interviews as well with participants to kind of elicit more um, complex narratives or more sort of detailed narratives about how the assessments that were submitted went. So were there challenges? Um, would they change things? And finally, based on those interviews, we hope to continue to refine this framework, really with the goal of making it as, as adaptable and as flexible as possible. So our research is driven by two pretty much underlying questions that deal with what uh, assessments look like and how we can understand their functions. So first, um, we're asking what are the common features of these assessments that address generative AI in some way? And so those, those submissions, the assessment submissions and the content analysis kind of help to answer this question. 
And then we're asking, how can we evaluate the efficacy of any assessment, given the fact that AI is, generative AI is something that all students have access to and um, they can use whether permitted or not. Um, so ours is not the first of this kind of framework. Um, there's a con this continuum I'm showing here um, is published by Matt Miller, um, and it's designed to help instructors determine kind of the level of appropriate AI use. Um, but I would have you note it's kind of scalar form, let's say. So it goes from more, cre more AI creation, so where students are permitted to use, um, rely more heavily on generative AI, to um, completely you know, human work, so not using AI at all. Um, this kind of scale or continuum is very common right now in sort of determining or helping instructors determine uh, how to incorporate AI into their assessments. So for example, another more recent scale, the AIAS, the AI assessment scale, um, similar to Miller's model, sort of begins at no AI at all, and then it moves to full AI um, with sort of gradations along the way, right, sort of middle um, areas. So I think these are very straightforward and effective at the current juncture, but I have two concerns that are kind of driving the research and the, the development of our own framework. First, I think these kinds of scales assume um, that as you move towards more AI, your students are doing more complex tasks, which I don't think is necessarily the case. Um, AI could be used for more simplistic tasks um, and let the heavy lifting, leave the heavy lifting to the students. And the other assumption um, that I think is being apply implied here is that the goal is to move towards more AI integration, which I am very hesitant to get on board with. So we have our own 4C framework that we've developed that is uh, using a four property Venn diagram, which is not something I think you see very often, um, but it basically consists of these four descriptive categories I'll talk about in a second. Um, that deal with generative AI in some way. So we're trying to describe assessments based on what the tasks included have students do. So for example, collaboration, our first classification, includes tasks where students are asked to use generative AI in a collaborative fashion to produce new content. We have critique, where students are asked to evaluate the output of an AI model as part of that learning process. Um, content disclosure, this is a sort of metacognitive um, element where students are asked to think about the ways that they're using AI and document them for the instructor. And finally, we have confirmation. And this is an instructor-imposed element where the instructor designs some aspect of the assessment where they are able to confirm that the student hasn't used generative AI or maybe has used it in the correct manner. Um, so the framework, as I mentioned, is sort of best represented by this kind of four property Venn diagram because it allows for any possible configuration of these different descriptive um, classifications. So you could have an assessment that has students collaborate with AI and also has them dis have them disclose how they collaborated, but you don't have them critique. You're not quite at that level yet. You just want them to sort of learn how to use the tools. So I've included um, some examples from our uh, collected assessments so far with quotes. Um, I don't have time to go in depth you know, to all of these right now, but they kind of range from we had an, an assessment where students are asked to collaborate with an AI model as a kind of simulated interview for a program evaluation. Um, so the AI acts as a persona uh, that they then interview and then they report um, you know, based on what the AI uh, produces to a professor who's having their students schedule 45 minute Zoom sessions where they are able to sort of confirm that the student's knowledge, in this case uh, uh, articulated in an essay form, is actually that student's knowledge and AI hasn't been used to do it. So to summarize, we view this 4C framework as a model that really, our, our goal is to provide educators with the language, whoops, with the uh, language they need to actually articulate and understand their assessments and the way AI either fits into those assessments or does not fit into those assessments. We see it as a model that will remain flexible, adaptable, and durable, um, despite the quick, quickly changing and developing and evolving technology. It's one that departs from those linear scales and continua that I, I showed earlier and gives a kind of more, I think, a more flexible way of thinking about assessments task-based and descriptive-based rather than what are the capabilities of AI, which 
are bound to change um, tomorrow, probably. <laughs> and finally, um, it's a model that we will continue to revise in light of the data we're collecting through interviews and um, just other, other avenues as well. So thank you all for uh, letting me talk to you. And I do have my sources here, the couple of frameworks, and then our website, if you're interested, is genaiteach.ca, where you can see those assessments and learn more about the research. Thank you.